you know, nothing has really happened yet, but because this is such a strong topic, I guess, I wanted to bring this up and ask the Habs faithful on this YouTube channel, what exactly is the thought consensus that we have on Ilya Kovalchuk now? Because there was this article that came out earlier on TVA Sports talking about how Ilya Kovalchuk doesn't really have any pressure to do anything with the National Hockey League in terms of a free agent contract signing anytime soon. Because he's 37 years old, he's in a position where he knows the league is kind of tight on money, there are some other guys that are out there who still need contracts, and he says it himself, it's a matter of being in the right place at the right time. He is in no hurry. There are a few other quotes here in this TVA Sports article talking about how what we're looking for, the agent and I, we're looking for both sides to be interested, not just one side. That's really important. And then later on in the article, because of course it's on TVA Sports, it's a Montreal-based news outlet, they go over the Montreal Canadiens. Everyone loved Kovalchuk on our team, Mark Bergevin said. For Kovalchuk, hockey is not a job, it's a love for the sport. If you ask me to identify just one thing about Kovalchuk, I would say it's how much he enjoys playing. And Kovalchuk said this about Montreal, you know, it's a special place. People love hockey there, it's like a religion, it was a good time for me. Like I said when I left, I appreciated everything the organization had done for me, it gave me an opportunity to play. So, later on he does say that he'll try to keep himself in shape and he will see what happens soon. But I wanted to ask the question here because the article kind of connects the two and it brings up the fact that both Kovalchuk and both the Habs have enjoyed what it was that they brought each other in terms of their contractual relationship back in 2019-20. But the Montreal Canadiens are in a spot now where their top nine consists of the same guys we've spoken about before. Tatar, Dano, Gallagher, Toffoli, Suzuki, Anderson, Drew, and Kotkin, Yemi, Armia. You have a fourth line projected over here on Daily Faceoff of Paul Byron, Arturi Lekkonen, and Ryan Paling. You could debate whether or not Paling is good enough to be in that spot, but at the end of the day, I would say that his overall prospect progression kind of says that he needs to be in that spot in order for us to see some long-term upward potential, but that's just me personally. So where do you fit a Kovalchuk in? Everybody kind of knows that Kovalchuk was one of the hottest things that happened with the Montreal Canadiens last season. However, he did kind of fizzle out towards the end of his tenure in Montreal before he ended up getting traded for a draft pick. However, Kovalchuk in Montreal got 13 points in 22 games played. That's really not bad if you do the math. 13 divided by 22 multiplied by 82. That's a 50 point pace. And he did that pretty much as a random guy who signed a one-year 700k mercy contract at best. And because everybody kind of had this admiration towards Kovalchuk when he left, there still was this debate going on that was saying, okay, we should see him come back. We want to see him sign with this team again. But now, hey, you guys got Anderson, you guys got Toffoli, you guys have a different forward core. So, this is a short video. Talk to me in the comments what you think about Kovalchuk and the idea of him coming back. Because I know certainly it would be something that I would like to explore, it's just there are a lot of questions on where exactly you go from there. So talk to me in the comments what you think of the enjoy this video. And bye.